was hovering over the face of the waters. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. You are the Lord God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star, the line of the tribe of Judah. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. rise on your feet and let's worship the Lord this evening together. Amen. Come on. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, yeah. Come on, put your hands together. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing to the King of Kings. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing to the King of Kings. Sing, let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing to the King of Kings. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Yes, to the King of Kings. Come on, enter His gates with thanksgiving, and enter His courts with praise.
One time, one time. Chief Chris Mitchell. Welcome to the Feast of Tabernacles celebration by ICEJ. And welcome to those watching live all around the world on God TV, Daystar, Vision Norway, and live streaming on ICEJ.org. So we want to welcome you. And you have, we have 5,000 pilgrims from all over the world from nearly 100 nations gathered here in Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Let's hear from some of those nations. Is Ivory Coast here tonight? How about Brazil? <laughs> How about Finland? Taiwan? How about the Philippines? <laughs> and for those who are watching uh, on live TV right now, why don't you pray and Decide if you want to come, prayerfully consider if you want to come here next year to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. You know, the Feast of Tabernacles is about the past, it's about the future, and it's about the present. It celebrates the past when God himself protected the Israelites as they came out of Egypt and went to the Promised Land for 40 years. And they lived in booths or sukkahs. And if you go around here in Israel, you could see these sukkahs being built by Jewish people all over Jerusalem and throughout Israel. And it also celebrates the future, when the nations of the world will come up to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles with the Lord of Lords and King of Kings when he rules and reigns here. And it's about the present, too. It's about a moed, an appointed time, when you've come here to meet up with the Lord because of all the feasts this is the one feast where God himself opens up and asks the Gentile nations to come up here to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. So it's an amazing time for all of you, an appointed time for all of you here. So tonight's going to be an exciting night. We have uh, an evangelist, Angus Buchan. And if, and if you're not excited now, you will be when Angus gets up here. And we have the Fiji praise and worship that's going to lead us into the presence of the Lord. But first, we have a speaker who I think is going to be 
tell you about an amazing, amazing movement that we have at CBN News have had the privilege to report on for the last uh, three years, an amazing movement about the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast. So let's watch the video and introduce our next speaker. In recent years, the ICEJ has had the privilege of partnering with an exciting initiative in Israel, the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast. The Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast is an initiative of the President of the State of Israel to invite Christian leaders from around the world to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Please welcome Director of the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast, Albert Vexler. Thank you. Shalom. It is really a privilege to be with you here. And, uh, you know, God is about keeping His promise and doing it right on time. Now, we don't realize sometimes when God's time is. So we think He is late. But sometimes, as my experience shows, He is early. So I was uh, approached by Robert Ilatov when he was serving as the Christian Allies Caucus Chairman in the Knesset in 2016. And uh, he asked for my help. I said, well, how should I help you? He said, look, we need to bring together the friends of Israel from all over the world. I said, look, we have so many organizations. You have the Christian Embassy. You have the Christian Friends of Israel, Christian Friends for Israel, Bridges for Peace. You name it, you have it. He says, no, I want to do something even bigger. And this is the moment that I just said these words, even not thinking. I said, look, what we need in Jerusalem is a prayer breakfast. He said, you're crazy. I didn't say I know I am, but I said, look, if you want something bigger, we have to have a prayer breakfast because I had prayed for it. So he said, you think that we will come together? It's a Jewish state, so you think we're going to pray for, to Jesus? I said, look, we could actually do something together that the Christians and Jews can agree about. We can uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem together. He said, you are crazy. You are crazy. Forget about it. Now, in my mind, I was thinking, it will take me 10 years to get this happen. Next week, I'm back in the Knesset, and he sees me, he says, come, come to my office, sit down. I said, okay, what did I do? Um, I spoke with the president. He thinks it's a great idea. He will host it. He will not say it publicly, but he'll do it. And um, he said, look, we will have to do it. Are you going to help me or not? What I thought will happen in 10 years, God knew exactly when it should happen. On the 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem on June 6 and 7. And imagine this little thing. We had people that prayed that the president of the United States of America would move the embassy. We did it on June 6. Six months later to the day, on December 6, he announces that he recognizes Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and he will move the embassy, which he did on the 70th anniversary of the State of Israel. Well, since that, we've had so many miracles, I don't have time to tell you. We've had 12 Jerusalem prayer breakfasts all over the world, three in Jerusalem, and I'm really thankful, Jürgen, to you for standing with me, because when this challenge was really given to me, I'm thankful that you stood with me. Angus, you were speaking at our last prayer breakfast in Jerusalem, and you did a great job. And we are coming to South Africa now. Are you ready to receive Jerusalem prayer breakfast in March? Bloemfontein, we're coming. So we've had, we've had 12 prayer breakfasts. We've had one First one in London outside of Israel. Then we had one in uh, Ghana, Accra, Ghana. Then we had one in Uganda, Orlando, Florida, San Antonio. We had one just in Helsinki. Frederick, are you here? 
We had a fantastic one in Helsinki, The Hague. And we are going to have one in London on November the 20th. Now, why am I saying this? Because this is something very unique. It was initiated by the Knesset. They ask Christians all over the world to come and to pray. So June 2 to 4, 2020, we will gather again. We will go to the Knesset. We will have the president come and receive the friends of Israel who will be gathered to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thank you so much. See you again. The Feast of Tabernacles strives to express what the Lord is doing around the world. Tonight, we are privileged to have a special expression of worship from the island of Fiji. Please welcome from the ends of the earth, the Fiji worship team. Yes. 
Please welcome the National Director of ICEJ Finland, Yanni Salakangas. Good evening. Are you excited? Tell to your neighbor, although you don't know it, God is doing a new thing. You know, with the Christian Embassy, we love to speak about new beginnings. And you know, although you don't know it, God has been doing a new thing through the Finnish branch for the past year. Just exactly like God is doing a new thing in your life and you do not yet know it. So it is my privilege 
to actually present to you tonight a world premiere uh, of a very famous gospel singer, Pekka Simojoki from Finland, his album Nordic Praise. This album has been translated into Farsi, Arabic, Hungarian, Estonian, and now into Hebrew. Yes. Many of you must be asking, why does a Finnish guy and a Finnish branch is actually producing a Hebrew CD? Very easy. Because we Finnish people are very good at finishing stuff. <laughs> so, we want to be as an ICJ, we want to be a blessing to the local body, to the Messianic body. And this CD, you're going to hear two songs from this uh, premiere, which CD will be launched next month. Two songs for the first time ever heard in the world in Hebrew. It is my joy to welcome the local Messianic body, one of the choirs, and Vesna Buhler, because without her, this would have not been possible. Welcome.
World premiere. Let me ask you a question. Are you excited? Okay. Another question. Do you want to be honored in life? Yes. How many of you want to be honored? How many of you want to be honoring God? Okay, good. So I will read to you the following scripture. Because all of you now, raise your hands. In honoring God, Proverbs 3 and 9 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all 
your produce. Let me, let me ask you again. Are you excited in honoring God? Yes. You know, it is important how we honor God. I have four daughters, and I remember a couple weeks ago, my second youngest one took something from the oldest one. And the oldest one was kind of mad. And as a good father said, give it back to your sister because it belongs to her. And she came and she just threw it away. And then I asked the second youngest one, she's three, I asked her, did you honor and respect your sister? She says, no, daddy. A 3 year old understands that giving back to the person who that belongs matters. The way you honor God with your offering matters. The way you honor him is important. Many times it's easy to sing and shout to the Lord, but it is hard to praise him with your wallet. And as a Christian embassy, we want to be as a blessing here to this country. We want to be a blessing for the local community. We want to be a blessing for the local young adults who are the next generation in the local congregations. Many of them are actually here with us tonight. So I ask you humbly, ask from God right now in your heart, God, how much do you want me to honor you tonight? What is the level of honor you have for the one who sent the gospel from this city and one day it reached your life and now you can come back to this very city to give honor to the Lord for where the gospel was shot through the world. Honor the Lord the way he deserves and he will honor you back. God commanded the Jewish people to come three times a year here to Jerusalem to celebrate the great pilgrim feasts. And he told the people of Israel, when they come to the city of Jerusalem, into the presence of God, not to appear empty-handed. 2,000 years ago, not far from here, we are here at the southern steps of the Temple Mount. Jesus was inside the Temple compound and watching people, how they were giving towards the ministry of the Temple. And I can imagine the scene, how the disciples were sitting with Jesus and one of the disciples made a comment about a particular large contribution and maybe even Peter replied, he said, well, this man should have given more because he is a very wealthy money changer here in the temple. But then Jesus says, did you watch this apparently insignificant woman? And Judas, who was the treasurer, he said, yes, of course, I watched her. She was giving nothing, just those two little copper coins. And Jesus said, this woman gave more than anybody else because what she was giving was everything that she had. The Bible doesn't tell us, interestingly, what happened to this woman. But we read another story in the Bible from the story of Elijah in 1 Kings 17. There was an equally poor widow which was just preparing literally the very last meal for her family and Elijah asked her to feed her. As a step of faith, she gave this very last meal to the man of God and from that moment on a blessing was released over her life. The flour in her pot and the oil in her jar would never cease flowing from that moment on. God's blessing was resting over her because Jesus was watching her, the heaven was watching her as she was giving everything what she could. And I want to encourage you this year at the Feast of Tabernacles to consider a most generous gift. Whatever you are able to do, I guarantee you God is watching you. Jesus is watching you as you are blessing the people of Israel, as you bless God's work here in the Holy Land. May the Lord bless you richly as you are giving your generous offering at this year's Feast of Tabernacles.
Comfort. Comfort my people. A voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. For 2,000 years, stones of anti-Semitism blocked the path between Jews and Christians. How do we overcome? A group of Christians stepped out and marched through the streets of Jerusalem to show solidarity with Israel and celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem. From this pivotal moment, the ICEJ was born. We follow the path of those who have gone before us. The prophets foretold of a day that a highway would connect Egypt and Assyria with Israel, a blessing in the midst. As these nations come together, we see the pages of the Bible come to life before our very eyes. The ancient division between Arab and Jew is being reconciled. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Clear the path. Remove every obstacle between you and an encounter with the God of Israel. Come, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles with the nations. In 2020 will be a very significant Feast of Tabernacles as the ICJ will be celebrating 40 years of comforting the Jewish people. It all will begin at the shores of the Dead Sea with an amazing desert celebration at En Gedi. And then we move here to Jerusalem and we will gather at the Pace Arena. We also will be marching through the streets of Jerusalem. And then lastly, we will end right here within the walls of Jerusalem's old city. It is with great expectation that we look forward to the Feast 2020. You don't want to miss this milestone celebration and I will see you right here in Jerusalem. Register today at feast.icej.org. say Erev Tov to me? Can I ask you to stand up if you can? If you still have strength, do you have strength to worship God? Can we sing a Hebrew worship song? Okay, so we are going to sing Shema Israel. Can you say with me Shema Israel? Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Echad Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Amen Shema Israel, Adonai Echad, Adonai Tzidkeh Shema
Jew and Gentile together. We have one father and our father is a good father, amen? So can you help me with this song? Thank you. 
יוצא לחיות לעולם. בצפון, בדרום, לא משנה לי, כל עוד אני לצידך. אם הרבה או מעט לא אכפת לי, אני תלוי רק בין... הוא חסר. הוא חסר לי דבר, הללויה. לא צריך לחפש, הללויה. לא שולט בי החטא, הללויה. אז השיר מהלב, די לי להיות בינך. די לי, די לי להיות בינך. Angus Buchan, a South African farmer turned evangelist, has impacted his nation and the world with his dynamic message of simple faith and trust in Jesus. 
Angus has been used by God in many miraculous ways, turning multitudes back to the Lord, and his life story has been captured in the powerful book and motion picture, Faith Like Potatoes. Please welcome tonight's speaker, Angus Buchan. A very good evening to all of you. May God bless you richly. I am so excited. So good to see so many young people here tonight. Give the young people a big clap. Give yourselves a big clap. What are you expecting tonight? Thank you very much, my girl. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray once more that you'd watch over the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, for we ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen! Amen. Come on, we've got to get it right. One, two, three. Amen. Amen! When you say Amen, the devil doesn't pay any attention to you. But when you say Amen, then the devil runs backwards. Come on, one, two, three. Amen! That's better. You, you know, I feel totally intimidated tonight. Because I'm sitting in the presence of a great Bible teacher, R.T. Kendall. Can you give him a big hand, please? Yeah. I don't know why, but there's a great expectancy in my heart tonight. I've just heard what uh, Jurgen's been saying, and Alfred, and uh, many of you. We've had a wonderful time tonight thus far, praising God, worshiping Him. But now we've got to get to the beginning. And the beginning of the beginning. And the beginning of the greatest revival that the world has ever seen. Amen. Why can it not begin in the most famous city on the planet Earth? Why not? There's no reason. There are more than 12 people in this auditorium. And Jesus used 12 people to turn the world upside down. Amen. Have you got your agricultural manual with you? This is the book that uh, I use when I'm farming. You're laughing. I'm not laughing. This is the book that tells me to love my wife. This is the book that tells me not to antagonize my children. This is the book that tells me to respect my elders. This is the book that tells me a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. This is the book that tells me that lazy people don't deserve to eat. This is the book of life. Come on, let's give the Lord a big clap, please. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank God for my good friend, Tommy. Tommy Vogert, can you stand up? This, this man goes with me all over the world. Please give him a big clap. He goes on his own steam, and uh, Jesus said we must go out two by two. Do you know that there are 1,100 intercessors praying for you right now, all over the world? 1,100 that I know of. Can you give them a big clap, please? Because many of them are watching this program. 1,100 intercessors. People say to me, Angus, what can we do for you? I say, pray. What can we give you? I said, pray. That's what I want. When men work, they work. But when men pray, God works. Amen. I want to speak to you about the beginning. I read the editorial in Jurgen's magazine. Well, the, 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 uh, the magazine that we got out just the other week, and it was spot on, exactly what God is telling me tonight. For many of us tonight... And I'm prophesying, this will be the first day of the rest of your life. Can you give the Lord a clap for that? The first day of the rest of your life. Like never before in my life, this book has become so important to me. If you take this book out of our faith, what do you have left? Nothing. And the devil knows that. And the devil is trying everything that he can 
to water down the power of the spoken word of God. And tonight we're going to put a stop to it. You know, I've got some distinguished men here tonight. Rabbi, I greet you. And I thank you for coming. Your country, and you know this better than me. Your country was founded on this book. This book. God gave Moses ten commandments. God made a promise to Abraham. I want to tell you that this book can change your life tonight. I found out about this book in, uh, on the 18th of February, 1979. My life was changed instantly because of this book. This book is a friend to me that sticks closer than a brother. There are people here tonight who are lonely. This book is going to become your friend tonight like you have never known it before tonight. Some of you are sick in your bodies tonight. This book will heal you. Some of you have got no vision. You don't know where you're going. I'm talking to the young people and the older people. This book will give you new direction tonight. This is the book of life. This book is Jesus Christ in print. Amen. Amen. If we go to the Gospel of John, chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4, I want to read the word for you. My wife Jill sends her love to you. I will see her tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jurgen. I will not be long tonight because there is a silver bird that's taking me back to South Africa tonight. So, folks, you better listen up because my wife said, Angus, don't be late. I have put the kettle on. What would we do without family? Vesna, well done. Give this lady a big clap. Stand up, Vesna, please stand up. Wasn't that magnificent? Well done. A proper clap. A proper one. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Somebody says to you, tell me about this Jesus you're always talking about. I don't know so much. Give Him a Bible. This is Jesus Christ in print. And I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking from the standpoint of a, a Bible college. I've never had the privilege. I'm talking about the school of life, sir. I'm talking about when there's no rain and the maize crop is dying and there's no hope. This book has saved my life. I'm talking about things when you get into depression and you go to the psychologist and he can't help you. This book will save you. For some of you, I've got a special word for you right now. Stop reading the newspapers and start reading the Bible. Amen. Now, if you go to Proverbs chapter 8, Proverbs chapter 8, I'm going to go there right now. I don't know when Proverbs was written. It was, they say it was written by Solomon. Is that right, David? So that's about, what, 3,000 years ago? Is that right? Well, listen to this. Because some of you say to me, tell me about the personality of Jesus. So we're going to go to the book of Proverbs, and we're going to see Proverbs chapter 8. Man, I just love the Word of God. The older I'm getting, the more time I spend in the Word. You know what they used to say? Some of these young men today, and it's a problem. I'm talking to George and Betty. It's a problem. Some young speakers say that Billy Graham, he used the Bible too much. You can never use the Bible too much. Never. The power is in the Word. See? And when you quote the Word, the devil backs off. When Jesus was tempted in the, in, in the desert, he could have told the devil to push off. But he didn't. He said, it is written. It is written. It is written, some of you young guys, tonight I'm going to pray for you in the front. And I mean it. You need to get the word into you. If it's not inside, it's not coming out. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap. 
It's not inside, it's not coming out. Now remember, this was, this was written 3,000 years ago or something. Listen to the words. Listen carefully. And tell me that this is a coincidence. Proverbs chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 22. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of His way. You say to me, Angus, uh, he's talking about wisdom. I'm talking about the personality of Jesus. Jesus is wisdom. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning, before there was ever an earth, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth or the fields or the primal dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, folks, it was only up until a couple of hundred years ago we thought the world was flat. Here we're talking 3,000 years ago about the world being around. This book is for sure and it's for real. I love it so much. Every time I read the word, there's a fire that starts in my soul. Jeremiah said, I wasn't going to talk anymore. They put me in the stocks. They threw rotten vegetables at me. They made a fool of me. I said, Lord, that's the end. You can read it in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. He says, but there was a fire in my bones which constrained me. I could not stop. People have been burnt at the stake because of that book. People have been ostracized by their families. Some of them are here tonight because of that book. And some of us can't even get out of our beds in the morning to read the word. My dear friend, I've come here tonight to tell you the truth in love. You want God to use you? You better get up in the morning. You know, I'm a farmer. I get up at 4 o'clock every single morning. That's the time I get up. Yes, irrespective. And I have my breakfast at 9 o'clock because that's what farmers do. But I don't farm anymore. My boys farm. And so I've got five hours a day that I can spend in that book. It's not a coincidence when you know the word and you pray for the sick and God heals them. That's not a coincidence. When you bring a word in season and it's accurate and it's true, that's not a coincidence. When you pray for rain and you call a nation together to pray for rain and then it starts raining, that's not a coincidence. That's because you've been listening to God and he said, call a nation to pray. 1.4 million in six weeks. 450,000 motor cars, a train coming from Cape Town, the airport's been closed, too many airplanes, the helicopter's like bumblebees going back and forward across the sky. No chairs, no food stalls, no collection coming on our knees before Almighty God, black and white and colored in India, and praying. And then God changed the president straight after that. And after that, they called the nuclear power station unconstitutional. If they had built it, it would have bankrupted South Africa. The RAND, which had been trashed all of a sudden, coincidentally strengthened. They started singing hymns in parliament. Because people prayed because of the word of God. Can we give the Lord a clap, please? I want to tell you, young people, you want to move. You want to see God move. You need to start to discipline yourself. And the older people, I want to tell you, there's no such word in the Bible as retirement. Only promotion. So tonight, I'm going to pray for you in the front. Yes, we've got lots of time. But don't dare come up here unless you mean it. Because God's going to hold you accountable. Don't play with God. I get very distressed when I hear men talking about the man upstairs. They talk about my, my mate, my friend, my buddy. He's God. 
You know that Moses saw the back of him and he had to wear a veil over his face for three weeks. And you talk about your mate, your friend. He's not your mate. He's God. He's your creator. And he wrote this book. Don't interrupt me. I haven't finished the scripture yet. Verse 28. And when he established the clouds above, then he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master craftsman. Who was beside him? As a master craftsman? Jesus. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his inhabited world. And my delight was with the sons of men. God wants you to delight in him tonight. God wants you to pick those shoulders up and stick that chest out. And walk down the main street in Jerusalem tomorrow and say, I am a child of the living God. You see, you see, when you know this Bible, this Bible said there is no more condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. You know where I'm going in a week's time? Jürgen, I'm going to the biggest prison in South Africa. It's in Bloemfontein. They're going to do something that's never happened before, my boy. They're going to give me access to 2,000 prisoners. These are dangerous men. Some of them are in forever, for life. They've allowed me to go and speak to them. And I'm going. And when I go there, I cannot tell them fancy stories. They don't want fancy stories. They want the truth. And you know what I'm going to tell them, madam? You know what I'm going to tell them? I'm going to tell them the only difference between you and me is that you got caught... And I didn't get caught. It's the only difference. Because the Bible tells me that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. See? But the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Can you see why I'm so excited about this book? This book has set me free. This book will give you eternal life. This book will say to you, my friend, go and sin no more. Your sins are forgiven. This book. But if you don't understand the book because you want your pastor to teach you, you're in trouble. You need to know the word for yourself. Not waiting for your pastor. We praise God for the pastors. Every one of us has a responsibility. And tonight I'm going to pray for you. Isn't that fantastic? Aren't you excited? Right, I'm nearly finished. Whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. It's time for men and women of God to stand up and to call sin by its name. I want to say to you young people, it was so good to see you da dancing up here. I've got three beautiful daughters and two lovely sons. I've got 11 grandchildren. I've got 27 adopted children. I've got 420 spiritual sons, which I'm mentoring. You can call me Father Abraham if you like. <laughs> but I want to tell you something now. If you are not going to walk the road according to this book, you'll never make it. You see, there's too many people are scared to tell the truth because they are scared they will lose the congregation. I want to tell you, young people, there's nothing new under the sun in that book. The wisest man who ever lived said that his name was Solomon. And he says, you will not sleep with anybody until your married night. You see, I'm wearing a ring on my finger. It tells me that I belong to one woman and she belongs to me. And we've been married for longer than you've probably been born. And I want to tell you, I'm more in love with her today than I've ever been in my life. My best friend. And her name is Jill. And I'm going home to her and I'll see her tomorrow afternoon. You see what happens when you break the law. You bring condemnation on yourself. God didn't write the commandments for him, madam. He wrote them for you and me. 
You must understand that this, this book was not written for God. It was written for you and I. I am a fundamentalist. Maybe tonight you're going to become a fundamentalist. What does that mean, Uncle Angus? It means every word in that book was written by God under the inspiration of men through the power of the Holy Spirit. Every word. Jesus says if you change a dot or a tittle, that means a stroke. See? You see, he says heaven and earth will pass away. My word will never pass away. I want to tell you this because I love you, not because of anything else. I don't want you to walk the road that I walked before I realized that I was going nowhere fast. We need to get serious tonight. And God is asking for a verdict tonight from you. Oh, but I've been walking with the Lord for 20 years. How long do you read the Bible every day? You read the Bible for five minutes? Can I come down here? Well, I'm coming anyway. You read the Bible for five minutes. You tell me you know God. You don't know God. How long have you known me? Two minutes. You tell me you know me. You don't know me. You know about me. You don't know me. John Wesley was a Methodist. Small little man from England. He stood five foot six tall. He rode 225,000 miles on horseback. He lived till 89 years old. He preached 40,000 sermons. He turned England from a nation of drunkards into a nation that changed the world. Don't clap it. John Wesley said to his pastors, unless you're spending five hours a day in the Word of God, change your trade. Tonight we are calling young girls like you to say, I'm going to stand up, Uncle Angus. I'm going to take this, this word. Moshe knows this. Africa for Jesus! Amen! Amen. Amen. You know, it's very sad for me when you go to Europe and you can't even mention the name of Jesus. Huh? I get in the airplane in South Africa, it starts with the pilots. They want me to come and pray for them. Then the air hostess gives me the best seat. It's called divine cheating. <laughs> Folks, Psalm 33 verse 6, By the word of the Lord... The heavens were made. This world was not made by a big bang. I've got a little nine-year-old grandson. And he goes to school and he tells his friends, this guy, Charles Darwin, is a fake. Do you know that when he was dying, his wife was a Christian. He repented of everything he said. I saw a big, tall, handsome, young black man on the TV in Kenya. And one of these anthropologists dug up some bones and he said, do you, what do you think? Do you believe that you originated from a monkey? That black man put his shoulders back, he put his head up and he said, Sir, I am not created from a monkey. I am created by the living God in His image. And I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Can we give the Lord a clap, please? No big bang. No big bang. God's creation. And it's the beginning and it's tonight. This Christian embassy is initiating a fire that's going to go around the world. I believe it with all my heart. What are we going to base the fire on? On revival. So how can we do that? God says, I would that no man would perish, but that all men may be saved. Can we give the Lord a clap, please? Thank you very much. That all men would be saved. Tonight it's your turn. I have never been so excited in my whole life. And I'm going to pray for you in a minute. 
Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 and 46. Jesus told a parable, and it went like this. He said, there was a man who had a lot of jewelry, and he found a pearl of great price. He sold all his jewelry, and he bought that pearl. This is the pearl I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. This pearl right here. It's the Bible. If you want to buy me a gift, you buy me a Bible. I've got every kind of Bible you can think of. Big ones, small ones, Chinese ones, Indian ones, everyone. This is my friend. When I'm lonely, and I'm on the other side of the world, and I'm missing my wife and my family, this Bible is my friend. I want to tell you, in our country, we are facing some very big challenges. The farmers have lost a lot of people. They've been murdered. And especially in my area. And when I go overseas, I leave my wife because she can't keep up with me with this rat race of a life, you know. And she stays at home. And people say to me, why are you so irresponsible? How can you leave your wife on her own? You've got no burglar bars. You've got no razor fences. You've got no electric fences. How can you leave her by herself? Your, your boys are there, but they live a kilometer away. I said, Jesus told me in this book, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. You know, one night I was very lonely, sir, very lonely. And I was sitting there and I was crying and I felt very down. I said, Lord, you know, I'm missing Jill and I, and I don't know where she is. And if something happened to her, I couldn't get back in time to, to help her. And you know what the Lord said to me? And I started crying, which I, I seem to cry more these days then laugh actually and, and the Lord said to me in my heart he said Angus am I not more able to look after your wife than you are you preach the gospel son and I'll and I'll look after Jill let's give the Lord a clap the Lord says to you tonight the Lord says to you tonight and we're going to pray just now if that's okay sir we're going to pray in the front, all of us, and especially the pastors, because some of us are weighed down with burdens. I don't know how I'm going to get this business going. I'm going bankrupt. My marriage is on the rocks. My wife and I don't talk to each other anymore. I've got children that don't even come home. They don't even write to me. And it's, it's killing you, and you've been to the doctor, and he's giving you tablets, those happy tablets, and they're not working. Why don't tonight you take this book literally? Why don't you take it literally, son? And say, Lord, tonight I'm going to cast my cares upon you. Because you care for me. I'm going to start taking this book and reading it properly and believing it. You see, you see, some of you say, God never answers my prayers. Because you don't believe. That's why he doesn't answer your prayers. God doesn't answer prayer. I said, God doesn't answer prayer. God answers the prayer of faith. Not prayer, faith. And faith has got feet. Can you see my cowboy boots? Faith has got feet. Faith is a doing work. Tonight, you're going to do something. What are we going to do? You're going to come to the front. Yes. And you're going to repent that you don't even read the Bible. You read, uh, I'm not going to use any names. Think of all the big speakers in the world. You've got that one's devotional. Maybe you've even got a couple of mine. But you never read this book. Don't. <laughs> I want to say, so I'm a very poor salesman. If you are reading my devotional and you're not reading the Bible, do me a favor, chuck my devotional away because it came out of this book. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap, please. Tonight, we are going to commit ourselves to discipline and to read this book. So he bought the pearl. He sold all his jewelry and another man had a field and he found a, a, he found in that field a, a, an amazing amount of of treasure so he went and he and he got some money and he bought the field so that he could have the treasure how much is your faith costing you my boy if it's costing you nothing it's worth nothing i'll say that again because some of you didn't get that Ah, oh, yeah, but I was, I've been in the mission field. I don't care how long you've been serving the Lord. When I see these young people dancing up here, singing for the Lord, 
and you can't even get out of your seat and clap your hands, I'm questioning your faith. When people mention the name of Jesus, do you cry? Well, I used to. In 1965, when I gave my life to the Lord. What about now, sir? And when you read that Bible, do you read it because you want to learn something or do you just read it through parrot fashion? We're talking about new beginnings. I've read this Bible, I don't know how many times, Jurgen. I really don't. Every single time, madam, I read this Bible, it tells me something different. Every time. I run through the Jill because we have separate quiet times and then we have a quiet time together. I run through and I say, Jill, look what the Lord showed me this morning. God will tell you whatever you need to know. You, you, see, you see, a good idea is not necessarily a God idea. And a need does not justify a call. I'm going to tell you what happened to me. In 2010, we had a men's conference on the farm of somewhere in the region of 450,000 men. Come on, can you give the Lord a clap for that? Almost half a million men. They came on Friday, they left on Sunday. We experienced God like we haven't before. And you know what the Lord said to me in my quiet time? He said, that's the last one. I couldn't believe it. He said, Pastor, batten onto the young men. That was a very hard thing for me to do. People phoned me up, they said, you are, you are stopping a revival. This is something that God's done and it hasn't been done before. I said, God said it's enough. You know what happened since then? That was in 2010, it's 2019. We've got mighty men conferences all over the world. Next year, we're having one in Alaska. We're having another one in Canada. We're having one in Arkansas. We're having one in Bolivia, um, 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 Brazil. We're having, another, we're having them all over Africa. Why? Because I did what God told me to do. Now, if I had carried on, I guarantee today there'd be no more mighty men. You see, we've got to obey God. And when you give something to God, He gives you more back. And when you hold on to it, you lose it. I'm talking to young people who are falling in love. When is the time to get married? How long do you have to wait? Artie. London. City Temple. You know the place. I had the privilege of speaking there. I wasn't even talking about marriage, Albert. I was talking about holiness. I wanted to get home to my wife, Jill. It was the last meeting. I'd been there for a week or two. And as I was walking out the side door, a man ran up to me and he grabbed me by the arm. And he had a beautiful girl on his other arm. She was a Croatian and he was a South African. And he was crying. He said, Uncle Angus, you cannot leave. I said, I have to go, son. I've got to go home. No, he says, you can't. See, this is what happens when you preach the word. He said, before you leave here tonight, you have to marry me and my girlfriend. Because you see what was happening? They were lonely. They were in London. They were sleeping together. They committed their lives to Jesus and they said, no more sleeping together. We want to get married. So I came back into the church. I called them to the front. And then more couples came up. And more couples, they were dressed in their jeans. They, weren't, they didn't have a wedding dress on, but they were in love. That night, I married 12 couples. 24 people. Let's give the Lord a clap. That's what happens when you obey the word. It was one of the most incredible meetings I've ever had in my life. We had no rings. I said, has anybody got rings? The ladies were running up, pulling their rings off. I've got a ring. I didn't even know what the, what the wedding vows were. I had to kind of say, Lord, can you help me now? I, uh, do you promise to? <laughs> and I'll tell you what, they were crying. They were in each other's arms. There was another couple came up and said, we are counselors. We'll counsel them next week. The last I heard, those marriages were going strong. Why? Because of obedience to this book. Now, I want to finish up because I want to pray for you. I want to read you a sad story that I found in an old book. It's a story, a poem that was found in a soldier's top pocket in the First World War. He had been shot and he was dead. They found this poem in his pocket and I'm going to read it to you and you'll understand the power 
that is in the Word of God and the necessity to believe God's Word. Just listen to this. It's one of the most beautiful stories I've ever read. And here it goes. This is how he wrote. He said, look, God, I've never spoken to you. But now I want to say to you, how do you do? You see, God, they told me that you didn't exist. And like a fool, I believed all this. Last night, from a shell hole, I saw your sky. I figured right then that they told me a lie. Had I taken time to see things that you made, I'd have known that they weren't calling a spade a spade. I wonder, God, if you'd shake my hand. You see, you see when you're reading the Bible, then you can talk to God like this. Somehow I feel that you would understand. Funny, I had to come to this hellish place before I had time to see you face to face. Well, I guess there isn't much more time to say, but I'm sure glad, God, that I met you today. I guess zero hour will soon be here, but I'm not afraid since I know you're near. There goes the signal. Well, God, I'll have to go. I like you lots, and I want you to know. Now, look, this will be a horrible fight. Who knows? I may come to your house tonight. Though I wasn't friendly to you before, I wonder, God, if you'd wait at your door. Look, I'm crying, me, shedding tears. I wish I'd known you these many years. Well, I have to go now, God. Goodbye. Strange, since I met you, I'm not afraid to die. And this poem was found on the body of a young soldier who died. I want to say to you tonight, do you know God? Do you really know God? Or do you know about Him? You see, son, I might not know this book as well as some theologians. But man, I know the author so well. He's a friend to me. And he's taken me all these years all over the, I've seen too many miracles. I've seen the sick raised. I've seen a dead person raised to life. Yes. I've seen the weather change. I've seen rain come when there was no rain. I've seen the Lord bring a thunderstorm on my farm and put a fire out when everybody else laughed at me. And I got on my knees in the dust when we couldn't put the fire out. And I'd known the Lord for two weeks. That's all, madam. Two weeks. And the Bible says... Call unto me and I'll answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty miracles of which you do not know. But you see, folks, you've got to be able to humble yourself. And it's a terrible thing when you become a proud man and the Lord departs. I don't think there's anything more painful than to know that once I knew him, but now I don't know. You know, sometimes I feel I can smell him. Sometimes I feel he's more close to me than you are there. He's taken the fear of death away from me. Sir, if the plane crashes, I'm going to heaven. See? See? Paul, Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 1.21. How can you frighten a Christian with heaven? If you live, you live for Jesus. If you die, you go home. See? And the older I'm getting, the more I realize I don't want money. I really don't. I don't want possessions. Because they seem to cause so much confusion and trouble in the family. If I had to tell you, you probably wouldn't believe me. I don't even own a house. See? See, I gave them farms. I've got three farms. I gave them to my sons. I gave them the farms. I gave them the checkbook. And I gave them the debt. <laughs> so I'm free. I stay there. I don't pay any rent. I don't pay for light and water. Free! This book will set you free. And so, and so I want to pray for you tonight. Is that okay, Jurgen? Can I do that, sir? I, I really need to.
because I'm going now. And some of you, I won't see you again on this earth. See? Remember, good people don't go to heaven. No, 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 no. If good people went to heaven, the Muslims and the Hindus and the Hare Krishnas and the New Age people would be in heaven before any of us. See? Believers go to heaven. And how do you get faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So I'm going to ask the, 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 the keyboard man, can you play something, son? Just very quietly, very, very quietly. Because I want us to come before the Lord. We've had a wonderful night tonight. I will never forget the dancing. By the way, the Fijian girls, I want to tell you, it's my favorite team. Fiji is my favorite rugby team. Yes. And, and you know why? Because you wear Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 on your rugby jerseys, which says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And I want to tell you there's power in the word. And I want to tell you tonight when you say, Lord, I'm going to repent tonight because I know in my heart I'm not spending enough time reading this book. It's not about memory, memory verses. I mem memorize verses. A parrot can memorize verses. But you've got to understand what it means. So when people say, can you come and preach? I say, I'll come back to you. I'm praying. And God opens doors and he closes doors. Yes. Do you know that? Do you know that? Revelation chapter 3 verse 8. I've, he says, I've seen your work. I said before you an open door that no man can close. Because I see that you have little strength. But you've kept the faith and you've not denied my name. We don't have to take a chance. You don't have to say, which way is the wind blowing? No, no. What is Jesus saying? And Jesus never makes mistakes. And you know, if you start to take this word and apply it to your life, people will even think that you are clever. They will even perceive that you're a wise man because you obey in the book. But I want to say in closing, and then I'm going to ask you to come to the front. And we're going to pray a prayer of repentance today. Yeah. You, know, you know what keeps men back? And I'm going to come, I'm going to come and stand here because... The men need a lot of encouragement, especially when they're with their wives. That's why mighty men is doing so well, because we speak to men on their own. And they break down and they weep and they cry and they repent. And I'll never do that when the women and children are there. And they repent of things like pornography and adultery and lying and thieving. And then God sets the whole family on fire for Jesus. But what holds men back is a thing called pride. Filthy, stinking pride. I'm not going up there. Well, the Lord says, well, you just stay where you are. Jesus died for you, sir, on a cross in this town. And it wasn't with a nice drape. He was naked. It was in the city, rubbish dump for your sins. The least you can do tonight is to stand up for him. The least you can do tonight is say, Lord, I'm sick and tired of a mediocre life. I'm going to start taking this word literally. You see, in our country, a lot of people are leaving, especially young people. They can't take the farm murders anymore. They can't take a lot of things. And I said, if God's told you to leave in the word, leave the same day. But if God hasn't told you anything, stay. And that's a word for somebody here tonight. See? If God has not told you to marry that man, don't marry him. Yeah, but all my friends are married. It doesn't matter. See, if God tells you to start that business, start it. But you see, sir, you don't know the word. So you want to go into partnership with a man who's an unbeliever. And Jesus says, two oxen pulling this different ways will never move the wagon. See? And there's a young girl here and she wants to marry that young boy because he's a very handsome boy and he's a nice boy. But he's not a Christian. And so what will happen is six months down the road, you'll start fighting. Because you want to go to church and he doesn't want to go to church. And that businessman you've gone into partnership with, he's got lots of money and he's a nice man. When you start making a profit and you say, I want to tithe 10% to the house of God, he'll say, not with my money. And so now you've got a breakdown. But if you obey that book, you will never go into business with an unbeliever. And you will never marry somebody who's not a Christian. Let's give the Lord a clap. I'm talking here about the Word of God. So, so, so what we're going to do, 
We're going to sing a song, right? You know what song you're going to sing, okay? And you're going to sing it quietly. And while you do, I'd like you all to stand up, please. Everybody standing up. And there's plenty of room here. We'll move all these chairs out the way because tonight something massive is going to happen here. I want to ask you from the top, right from the balconies there, to start coming down. We're going to repent tonight in this house, in this place, in Jerusalem, God's city. And we're going to say, Lord, please forgive us because we will never begin to live a new life until we start to begin with the, with the word of God. Can you come down, please? And can you start singing? Thank you. Just come down, folks. Come out of those chairs. You might not even understand why you're coming forward tonight. But Lord, the Lord will show you. And I believe tonight by the grace of God. I believe by the grace of God. This Bible will become a reality to you. Please come forward. Come forward. I'm talking to my African friends. Come tonight and repent before God. Say, Lord, forgive me for not taking this book literally and believing it. Come right around the side there, please. If you can move those chairs back. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. There's lots of people still coming forward. Just come down right around the side. Right around the side, please. It's very important. Very important, sir, to do something publicly. Very, very important. There's no secret agent Christians in the Bible. Nothing. If you can't stand up here for Jesus, you'll never stand up outside. This book will heal you. This book will set you free. This book will heal you from cancer. This book. This book will renew your mind. This book. This book will change you forever. This book, this book will heal your marriage. Heal your family. This book. I'm waiting for you. Please come forward. Come down. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God and the salvation for those who believe. First the Jew, then the Gentile. Romans 1.16. You've got no reason. No reason to remain. Please come. Come down here. Right here. Come around here, please. Come down this side. There's people behind you wanting to come forward. We're just going to hang on for a minute. I, just want to, I really want to give you a chance tonight. It's very, very important. This is Jerusalem. This is not, any, this is not New, New York City. This is not Johannesburg. This is Jerusalem. This is Jesus' city. This is where the Holy Spirit visited the disciples. This is where the Holy Spirit opened the eyes of the disciples. This is where this book was written. This book. This is where this book took place. So what are you asking us to do, Angus? I'm asking you to come to the front. I'm asking you to ask God to forgive you. I will pray with you. Because you have been playing the fool with this book. And most of the problems that you are up against are self-inflicted. And you are blaming God. It's not God. It's you. You don't believe this book. You really don't. That's why you pray for healing and then you go to the doctor just in case. We're just going to wait and then these guys are going to sing again. And I want this man to sing. I want you to sing something very short and very powerful. I'll tell you when to sing. And I want you to sing it in Hebrew because it's going to touch us, especially me. Will you do that? You just wait. But I want you to sing that song again, please, with this beautiful choir. I want to tell you, I love you guys so much. But you know, all this that you're doing, and it's amazing, really it is. I'll cherish this for the rest of my life. But if it's not for Jesus, and if it's not being done because of the Word of God, it's worthless. It's straw and stubble that's going to burn. You've got to start to appropriate the book. You see, Jürgen Buller said to me, Angus, I want you to speak about new beginnings. Well, tonight's a new beginning, sir. It's a new beginning. Folks, we're just going to wait a little bit. There's still a few of you need to come forward here. 
just push for, can you come up nice and tight here? Right up here. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not laboring this. There's people on their knees here. Can you stand up and just come forward? Because I want those folks to come up. And those of you up there that need to come down, I'm just going to wait for a minute. I'm just going to wait for a minute. Then I'm going to pray one prayer. I'm not praying for healing tonight. No. No. I'm not praying for interpretation. No. No, no, no. I'm praying one prayer. And that God will open our eyes. And open our eyes and start to cherish this word. Start to take this word seriously. People in the Middle East right here are dying because of this book. And some of us are playing the fool. In China, North Korea, Iran, you get caught with one of these books, you die. Some of you have got books in your house, it's full of dust. Dust, because you don't read it. Tonight you're going to ask God to forgive you. Every day, my girl, before you get the kids ready for school, this book must be read systematically. Starting in the book of Psalms and then going across to the Gospel of John, reading a portion every day, writing it down in a, in, in, in a diary. I, I do 10 television programs a week, just like R.T. Kendall. 10, 10 a week, I do. It's not, not counting the, the events. Where do I get the stories from, my boy? You can't tell the same story twice. I get it from the Bible. Every single morning, God gives me a story. Every day. We have got 4,000 programs in the cloud. 4,000 programs. 4,000 programs. I, don't, I haven't even got any education. Where do I get the stories from? From this book. This book is alive, son. This book is the living word. This book. This is the book of new beginnings. This book is not uh, a book. It's Jesus in print. This book. I went to see a Muslim. I went to his house to tell him about Jesus. I put my Bible on the carpet. And as a young man, he said to me, Sir, a Muslim, don't put that book on the carpet. Even he knew that this is a sacred book. This book. You don't have to ever be scared again from tonight. Never, do, never need to be scared again. You just read this book. See, when I'm missing my wife, I read this book. When I want reassurance that she's safe and I can't get hold of her on the telephone, this book. When my children, I don't know where they are, I read this book. When I want direction, I read this book. Next year, I've got many, many invitations. Too many invitations. Too many. I have to cut them back because I want to spend some time with my grandchildren. This book will tell me where to come and where not to go. And I won't go to the biggest meetings with the most amount of people. I'll go where God tells me to go because of this book. Now, folks, we're going to pray. But I would like uh, Jurgen Buller and his dear wife, I'd like you to come to the front, please, because I'd like you to be here with me when we pray. Can you sing that song just once more? Yes, please, madam. Sing it nicely. And I want you to listen. Just sit quietly and just, just think of where you are at the moment in your life. Just think. And there's still a couple of you need to come to the front. I really don't know why you're staying there. You want enlightenment? You say, I don't even understand this book. But you won't respond. Why? Just while they sing that song, there's just a few maybe you need to just come up here and say, Lord, tonight I'm going to make a commitment. And I'm going to ask your forgiveness. That's it. Just close your eyes. Heaven is real and death is a lie. Mm -hmm. I want to hear voices, angels above, mm -hmm. singing as one, singing hallelujah, holy, holy. Thank you, Lord. God great I am, great I am. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to be near. I want to be near. Loving the world. Thank you, Lord.
commanded Moses to tell his brother, his big brother Aaron, put a blessing on the people by telling them these words. May the Lord bless you in every area. May Hashem bless you in every area that you make him truly Lord of your life. No Lord, no blessing. If he's Lord, bless him. May he not only bless you, but actually bring you into union with yeah. him. So much so, so that you become more and more one with him until when the Messiah comes you will receive a transformed body for eternity. May his face shine when he looks at you because of how humbly you're receiving his help in every area, that's grace. And finally, may your faith shine with the presence of God's well-being and peace. Yevarech Adonai, Yevarech Adonai, Veishmerecha, Yae Adonai, Padav Legavi Hunega. Ye sad on I panavelega Vyase Lecha 
Shalom. Amen. Give him a shot. Thank you, my brother. Love you, man. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to pray. We're going to pray because you've been standing a long time. We are not praying for sickness. We are praying a prayer of repentance. We're going to ask God to forgive us for not putting him first. First, madam, first is first. And it's through the word. God's going to open up your spiritual eyes. You're going to fall in love with Jesus all over again. The Bible, you're going to start writing songs, my boy, that you've never, ever dreamt of. And you're writing beautiful songs already. But you're going to write. You're going to go to another level. There are businessmen here who are going to start making the right decision. No more rushing. No more panicking. We're going to slow down. Alfred, you'll see. You see nothing yet, sir. You'll see. You put that book in, f in, in, in first place. Everything else will come into line. You'll see. It's already started. But there's more coming. We've got to be definite about what we're going to do. So I, I just like Vesna and, and, and um, Jurgen, I just want to I want us to pray together. You see that boy over there with the check shirt? Yes. That's my son. Wow. His name is Joe Niemand, and he is doing a production in the theater in Jerusalem called Daniel. Mm. He's come from South Africa by faith, wow. and he's written that whole thing by himself. Can you give him a big clap? That's my boy. I love you. I'm so proud of you. And he got the words out of this book. He's South Africa's premier singer, that man. Okay, we're going to pray. Okay, please stand still. Don't move. Please stand still. It's very dishonorable before God. God is in this place. If you cannot feel the presence of God here tonight, there's something wrong with you. You've never met Him. From when I walked in here and I heard these people singing, thank you so much for your songs. You touch me, you're, da you're dancing. God is in the band. Thank you so much. And the organizers, thank you very much. I will never forget tonight, ever. Thank you for what you did tonight. God is in this place. This is not a place to be fickle and play the fool. Amen. Will you pray this prayer after me? And I want you to pray, David, nice and loud and clear. I want the devil to hear this prayer. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's been stealing from you and no more from tonight onwards. Will you pray this prayer after me? And I want you to pray it very loud, please. I want everybody to hear this prayer. I don't want you to close your eyes. I don't want you to, I don't want you to close your eyes. I want you to look around. Because the people that you're standing next to are your brothers and sisters. Are you ready? Dear Lord Jesus, this evening, in Jerusalem, Mount Zion, I ask you to forgive me. For not, taking your word literally. For not taking your word literally. For not believing your word. For not acting on your word. For not trusting you, For not trusting you. Through, this word. through this word. I am sorry. I, am sorry. I, promise. I promise. From tonight onwards. From tonight onwards. By, faith. By faith. That I will believe. Every word. That's written in this book. In this book. Nothing, more. Nothing more. Nothing less. Nothing less. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. And I thank you, I thank you. For, healing. for healing. Physically. Physically. Spiritually. Spiritually. Mentally. Mentally. And relationshiply. And relationshiply. That from tonight onwards. From tonight I am a new person. A new person. In, Jesus in Jesus Christ. This book. This book. Is my compass. My future, my future and my life. My life. I, will never, I will never, ever, ever doubt this word, doubt this word again. again. And I thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord that my sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven. And I am a new person in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this new beginning tonight. Father, we declare from tonight on a love and a passion for the Word of God. That as we read your Word, that we rejoice over it, have somebody found a great treasure. Father, I ask you for a spirit of revelation of every person. As we open the pages of the Scriptures, that your world will jump out of it and will come into our hearts, come into our minds and change us. Father, I ask for a spirit of revelation to get a new understanding of your world. That your world become part of our daily diet as of today. Father, I ask you the pastors that are here, the teachers that are here, the prophets and the evangelists, that your world, Father, will be the center of their message and their preaching. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And Father, we ask you that you help us to start even today reading and studying and more appreciating and more loving your world. And we thank you that you help us to do this. We ask you also for Brother Angus. We ask for his wife, Jill, that is at home, for his ministry. We ask you that you continue to use him. And Father, we ask you that you bless this man of God in the amazing calling that you have given to him. We all ask this in the powerful and the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Have you had an awesome time tonight? Amen. We are so thankful for every night that we get to gather together. Although the program has concluded, we're going to keep worshiping. So we invite you just to stay down here. Mr. Jamar, I want you to come down and lead us in worship. So many reasons to say thank you, Lord. Amen? Amen. So let's continue to worship the Lord in this land because it's a prophetic time for each one of us.
are faithful, Lord. You deserve all the honor, all the glory, because you are holy. And we are in the holy land. Your house, Lord. Your house of prayer. Your house of worship. Let's we stand in our feet tonight. We want watch to honor you, Lord, because you deserve all the glory, all the honor forever and ever. Let's sing Kadosh. Adonai Elohim Tzebaot. Because he's holy. You are holy, Lord. You can lift up your hands. And with your own words, can you adore the only one who deserves? Worship me, Kadosh. Kadosh. 